In this clip, we are going to take a look around our Unity scene and fix any possible problems when importing from 3ds Max. Okay, so first things first, let's take a quick look around our scene. And it would appear that the majority of our materials and textures have actually made it across the Unity intact. However, it would appear that some of our normal maps and metallic maps are actually missing. Now, this is quite normal because in 3ds Max, if we just take a look at the material structure, we don't really have many options to contain the metallic values. It is possible to hook up metallic textures into the specular map inside 3ds Max, and then in Unity, a script can be written to then reassign whatever is in the specular slot into the metallic slot into a unit in a Unity material. So this metallic slot here can be mapped to any slot in 3ds Max, but the most logical would be the specular. So essentially, it's possible to basically write a script that converts the mapping of a 3ds Max material into the mapping that works for a Unity material. But right now, because we've got quite a small material set, we can just quickly go ahead and reassign our textures. So for example, on this wall section here, we can see on the right hand side, we have the albedo and that's intact and that's correct. But the metallic and the normal are actually missing. So these guys are actually contained in the Unity interior dust FBM folder. So if I just go ahead and grab the black slate underscore M and I'm going to drag this guy into the metallic slot. And now we're going to see that this metallic slider has disappeared. And then we're going to go ahead and take the normal, so underscore N, and we're going to convert this to a normal map. Now, in Photoshop, it is possible to download the NVIDIA normal filter. And if this was applied inside Photoshop, Unity would recognize this as a normal map. But since we are needing to convert our normals from grayscale into Unity normals, so we can see here we've got alpha from grayscale, Unity will not actually see this as anything other than a normal texture. So in this case, we just need to go from the texture type in texture to normal map. And then we can just need to create this from grayscale so this can remain ticked. And then we just need to reduce this bumpiness down to a more reasonable value. And then we can just go ahead and change the filtering from sharp to smooth. Now this is going to make sure that we transition from the depth, so where the black is, to the highlights where the white is, that this transition isn't going to be too harsh. So if that is too harsh, I can go ahead and reduce the bumpiness if required. But right now I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply. And Unity will now convert the grayscale normal map into an actual usable normal map inside Unity. So if I just reselect the wall here, and in the inspector, it's quite useful that I, can, that I can see the assigned material in here. So by selecting an object, you can actually yes, kind of access the material inside the inspector, and that's a really useful feature. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag in the normal map into the normal slot. As you can see here, the normal map's now taken effect. So the wall is looking kind of dark, and so is the rest of the scene, and that's because we haven't actually applied lighting just yet. So in the later lessons, we're going to start to look at how to apply different lighting methods in Unity. So we're going to be looking at kind of mixed lighting techniques. So we're going to employ kind of a sunlight and interior lighting and those sorts of things. So that's going to really bring our scene to life. But right now, if we just kind of move around and eyeball the scene and make sure that none of the normals are incorrect. So from the outside, yes, we can see straight through the building. And that's pretty much expected, considering that Unity is only going to render single sides. So essentially, we're going to be restricting the user's kind of... Um, movement so the user's movements inside the scene are going to be restricted to the space inside the building so essentially the user will never leave these doors and essentially yeah the user will never be able to leave the back area either so eventually we're going to apply colliders and collision detectors on these doors which will prevent the user from exiting the main body of the building 
and in that case we don't actually need to worry about wasting geometry on making these faces double sided but yeah you gotta admit that it's quite uh, ugly from the outside and a little bit strange but essentially um, there's no need to waste um, any additional faces on this because we're never going to see the outside of the building so in the next clip we are going to take a slightly more detailed look at how to translate our 3ds max textures and 3ds max materials into usable unity materials using the pbr method